Hi there, Hector from Parse here. Today we're going to cover some general tips on using JavaScript and Cloud Code on Parse Server. Let's get started. JavaScript is a constantly evolving language, and there are a few best practices we would like to encourage. Furthermore, there are a couple of changes you may need to make as you migrate your Cloud Code to Parse Server. So before I get started, I want to cover two quick tips that are going to help you write cleaner code uh, when writing JavaScript for Parse Server. The first thing is um, I would suggest using promises instead of callbacks. Uh, this is pretty much standard practice and we cover that in our documentation. Um, but if you haven't seen this before, uh, I can show you a quick example here. So when you're writing uh, callbacks in the old way of writing parse cloud code, it will look something like this. So you have a query and you're querying over a specific class. Let's say it's uh, messages. And when you run that query, you would usually have uh, two functions, a success function and an error function or callback. So that's fine and it's pretty easy to use, but this can get pretty unwieldy when you have nested functions one inside of each other. So let's say for example, in my success function, if I, once I query that messages class, let's say I also want to uh, query a second class. Uh, I will have to write a second query here. Let's say query in other parse users. And I'm not gonna add any constraints, but let's just assume that we did that. It would mean that I have to now write a second um, success function in order to get to those results. And as you can see here, um, we're basically, if we have to keep doing this on and on, we're gonna end up with a very wide line of code. And there's just a cleaner way of doing this. So I'm gonna write it right below so that you can see an example of the before and after. So this is an example of how you write uh, JavaScript code using promises in parse. So let's write another third query. Again, over messages. This time though, I'm just gonna use then. Then um, basically allows you to chain um, promises together. So in this case, we're gonna do the first query and we're gonna get the results of running that query. And then within this uh, function that is called within the then, we're gonna write our second uh, chain query. Again, our parse user. And the trick here is instead of adding the then function here uh, and then that will result in another um, unwieldy chain of, of function, we're just gonna return that to resolve our promise. What that means is that we can now do another then here, which can have a function that has the results of querying that user class. So basically, uh, it should be clear here that if we use this method over the callbacks, we can end up with a cleaner code because basically you can chain them on and on and on. And it's very clear how the execution path goes here. So that's the first one, that's a very basic one. So there's another thing I want to cover before I go into a more advanced tips and tricks. So let's just get rid of this old function since we're now using uh, best practices and using promises in cloud code. Another way you can uh, write more concise code is to use uh, arrow functions. This is something you can use in parse server on node. 
So what this looks like is, uh, instead of having a function here that you're passing here, you can just go ahead, remove this, add the arrow, and uh, let's see. Do the same here. And here. So it's a pretty subtle change, but it does make for cleaner code. And once you get into more advanced JavaScript, this is going to be very important as using arrow functions, or sorry, yeah, arrow functions will make sure that the uh, the context of this is captured. So with, with that out of the way, there are two main things I want to cover in this screencast. So the first one, and it's very important, is when you are using parse server in Node, there is no concept of a current user. What that means is that you have a single server handling all the requests for all of your users in parse server. Therefore, you cannot have a shared global singleton and that refers to the one user. When the, the case in which this becomes relevant is, let's say for example, I have a, par a cloud function here, written uh, with the idea of running on the old parse.com cloud code. And the idea behind this function is to get all the messages for a specific user. When you're using uh, parse.com, all functions are called within the, the, um, the context of the user making that request. So in this case, we are querying the messages class with no constraints and then returning those messages back to the uh, client. That works fine in parse.com, but if you're using parse server, there's no current user, as I just said, which means that this, this query it's, it's going to run as if it was a public query. And if you're following best practices and these messages have an ACL that limit uh, the read permissions to the, to the specific user that owns those messages, then this array of messages is going to be empty because as a public query, it's not going, going to have access to those messages. So the way you fix that is is by actually making that request within the, the context of the user. You do that by passing the session token or user session ID to the find query. So let's just go ahead and do that. You can pass it as a parameter here in the find query. And we're going to pass the token. Now, of course, we need to obtain that token first. The way we do that is by getting the request that user that's already passed on to you by default. That's going to be a pointer to the user making that request to cloud code. So now we have the user. And the way you get the session token is just by getting it from the user itself. Now that we have the token, when we run this query in parse server cloud code, we're going to get all those messages that are restricted to that user and it's going to work all right. Now, there's a second thing that you should be aware of when using parse server cloud code. In parse server cloud code, there is no uh, use master key method. So we have here a cloud function called get, get message count and in the old parse.com service, if you run this function, uh, you would normally query all the messages in the messages uh, class, get a count, and return that to the client. If you were not using the master key, this would return the, the number of messages that you have in your inbox, because only you can access those messages. So to get the actual count of all the messages uh, in your app, 
you would need to use the master key here to basically get uh, access to read all those objects. So this works just fine in parse.com cloud code, but in parse server, as I said, there's no use master key function, at least not in the way it's written in this function. So we will need to make some slight changes to our code. Uh, first, let's just get rid of this line as it, it will just basically return an error in your code. And now what we do is for every operation that requires access to a master key, we're going to pass an additional option, use master key, colon through. And that's it. That's all you need to do to make sure this specific query runs using the master key. Now, remember that when you write parse.com cloud code and you make a call to parse.cloud.use master key, that change takes effect throughout the rest of the cloud function. So if you actually intend the master key to be used for all the operations in your cloud function, you'll need to add to pass this option to every operation. So that about covers it. In our next video, we're going to cover how you can contribute and give back to the community if you're interested in working on a parse server. Thank you for watching.